for Melton. Thank you, Acting Speaker, and uh, I rise to contribute to the Workplace Injury Rehabilitation Compensation Amendment Work Cover Scheme Modernisation Bill 2023. And the bill makes amendments to the Workplace Injury Rehabilitation and Compensation Act 2013 and the Accident Compensation Act 1985 to ensure that injured Victorian workers are adequately supported when they need it most. A couple of things I want to raise firstly in response to some of the contributions from the opposite side, and that is about consultation and that there has been extensive consultation even far back uh, to February with um, uh, the unions uh, and certainly the business groups and lawyers, uh, but also uh, throughout this year uh, there's been regular consultation with Trades Hall, Victorian Trades Hall, Union Affiliates, AIG, VECI and the ALA. But also I want to raise the issue of uh, what the Andrews Allen Labor Government has done and, and where our priorities are, and that is clearly about the mental health and wellbeing of all Victorians uh, for our government. And that's why you know, we are implementing all of the recommendations from the Royal Commission into Victoria's mental health system. And we've not wasted a day working uh, to build our state's new mental health system. And we've invested over $6 billion to do so. Um, but I just want to go back in history a little bit. And again, amongst many achievements like creating Vic Health and introducing nation-leading freedom of information laws, the Kane Labor government established work care and the predecessor to the current WorkSafe scheme. Uh, in 1985. And of course, the scheme was established uh, to primarily support workers with physical injuries. Uh, and if people remember back uh, 40 years ago, uh, there was very little reporting of um, mental health injuries within the workplace. It was all physical injuries. Um, so, of course, as I say, this was 40 years ago. So, of course, um, we need to amend this scheme uh, over the years and of course um, those opposite tried to amend the scheme in the 90s and did they amend the scheme they seriously affected workers by removing common law uh, under the Kennett government it was only when the Brax government was elected that it was reintroduced uh, and I thank the Brax government for that because there was many many paramedics that I represented that were affected by those changes in the 90s uh, and seriously affected by those changes in the 90s. Um, in 21-22 financial year, there was almost 29,000 workers that had uh, work cover claims and 90,000 people currently receive some sort of benefit um, from the work cover scheme, um, whether that be a payment, a weekly payment, a weekly compensation, or whether that be for some ongoing medical expenses or medical and like expenses like some home help or gardening or things like that uh, within their home because they have an injury where they're unable to perform those duties or they have no one to assist them with those duties. We know that workers with mental health um, claims are on work cover for much longer periods than someone that's uh, getting over a physical injury. Uh, and we know that the health outcomes for workers on comp compensation schemes are, you know, are four times uh, worse than those with the same condition outside these schemes. Uh, so work it probably indicates something within the scheme itself and about uh, how traumatic it is. And I've had to say this to even my past, my past members that sometimes the injuries are worse by going through the scheme than what they are as the actual injury. Um, the work cover scheme has witnessed a notable rise in mental injuries, which now make up around 16% of all new claims and they contribute to around 50% of the total cost of the scheme. Um, workers experiencing mental injuries tend to face longer periods, as I previously raised, from work uh, compared to those with physical injuries, and it's resulting in, in, in increased claim duration and costs. And the other thing about mental health injuries is that when someone sustains an injury, mental health injury from work, they're away from their workplace, they're away from their colleagues, they're, they're, they're potentially in isolation, and that is um, more damaging to someone that has a mental health injury. Um, of course, the bill introduces a specific definition of mental injury, characterising it as an injury causing significant behavioural, cognitive and psychological dysfunction. And of course, it must be diagnosed by a medical practitioner in accordance with the most recent ver version of the DSM. Of course, um, consequently, the injuries that uh, do not substantially impair a worker's function or, or lack a DSM compliant diagnosis 
will not qualify for compensation. And the bill uh, also mandates that uh, compensable uh, mental injuries must be predominantly caused by work. Um, the proposed legislation will incorporate an additional um, provision excluding compensation for mental injuries predominantly caused by work-related stress or burnout arising from events deemed typical or expected during a worker's duties. Um, so, of course, in this context, uh, the predominantly cause retains its ordinary meaning uh, and referring to the most substantial contributing factor in comparison to all others. So events um, considered reasonably expected or typical include typical work-related stresses commonly encountered by most workers during employment, such as reasonable additional hours. And I think the important thing is there it's about whether it's reasonable. And we see in some workforces there is many, many stresses and strains on em employees that are unreasonable. Uh, and I can go to the industry that I represented where ambulance paramedics have no choice but to have an extension of their shift on overtime uh, because they respond to emergency cases. Uh, and even though they might have worked a 10, 12, 14 hour shift, they continue to work sometimes and regularly continue to work well past the end of their shift, causing much stress and strain. And I know that um, first responders may be exempt under the provisions of this legislation, but it is an example how um, someone in their roles could do unreasonable overtime or un unreasonable duties. So the most important thing that I'm trying to stress here that these exemptions um, can only be um, provided if it's in a reasonable manner. And there are many, many workers that are put in an unreasonable situation and I think that's very unfortunate. But I'll go on to that by saying um, I call on the employers. Um, I'd love to say to you that we don't have to change uh, work cover legislation because our claims were kept low. But no, in some cases, um, the workplace um, is just not a, a nice place to work at. And there are many, many things that go on in a workplace amongst employees, amongst managers to employees. Um, and I call on the employers uh, to make sure that they manage the stress, the strains, the bullying, the harassment, uh, and uh, reduce the pressures on people that can reduce the mental health claims. Um, so I think that's an important thing and that is about oh and around the workplace. Of course the exemptions to this um, new exclusion for workers who are consistently exposed to traumatic events in the regular course of their duties and whose injuries is primarily a result of those traumatic experiences. So if a worker, worker's mental injury is mainly attributed to by traumatic events um, considered customary or expected in the course of their duties, again, such as frontline workers, the worker will remain eligible for compensation. And again, I make reference to our front line, some of our frontline professions, such as paramedics, police, firefighters, nurses, doctors, health professionals, um, should all be exempt through these changes. But again, I, I assume each case will be judged on its merit. Um, and of course then there's the vicarious trauma um, falls under the umbrella of post-traumatic stress disorder and again I go to the vicarious um, trauma which might affect people such as our triple zero heroes, our call takers and dispatchers where they're taking many, many emergency calls per day hearing traumatic situations and then dealing with those over the telephone and taking that home with them uh, and there's no question that there's been a number of those people that work in that industry that have sustained um, mental health injuries. Um, in the little time that I have left, um, I know that there's a process uh, of uh, conciliation uh, when one puts in for a claim uh, under this new legislation. Uh, sometimes if it's not uh, a decision made on that, uh, the matter would then be resolved by the courts. The only thing I say about that is that I just hope that the courts will be able to deal with these matters in an expeditious way and that there are not delays that hold up the outcomes of these claims that might affect those individuals, both from a compensation point of view but also from medical and like expense point of view. Um, so I hope that the courts don't get clogged with these sorts of claims, trying to get a claim uh, approved uh, by the courts. Um, this is a really important bill we have to do it because of the, the current work cover scheme. 
uh, and we will support injured workers all the way. I'll commend the bill to the House.